police descend on a man lying shirtless on a city street in Darwin. He tries to resist as officers bring the terrifying shooting spree to an end. Stay back there, please. Stay back there. The bloody rampage began an hour earlier, but the true extent of the horror wasn't clear until late on Tuesday night. Five crime scenes, four people deceased, one injured. This is not the Darwin we know. It appears the worst of the violence was at the Palms Motel. Jasmine Kelly, who'd recently moved in with her partner, heard banging and went to investigate. As I've gone down towards the stairs, I've saw a guy in a high-vis shirt walk out with a sh rifle. He's turned and looked at me and I've run, went into the bedroom, locked the door and we've hidden the bathroom. We called the police and just heard shot after shot after shot. They said it was a while before they heard sirens. Sort of looked out the window a little bit and it still went really eerie quiet, so we just locked ourselves back up again and waited until we were sort of clear to go. People in a neighbouring unit block called police but were powerless to help as they watched the gunman shoot, seemingly at random. We watched him. There was only two of us. We watched him walk from room to room, shooting every room. We thought it was fireworks going off. And then this man came carrying a woman, put her down on the footpath in front of us. She was bleeding all over the place. There were injuries all to her legs, lots of little injuries. Her boyfriend actually said that, that he opened the door and there was a guy with a shotgun and then he started shooting. And um, he shot her in the legs and she was screaming that she'd been shot. And uh, it definitely looked that way too. One man died at a pub near the CBD. Crime scenes were under police guard throughout the night, including at a home in the neighbouring suburb of Woolna, a busy city service station and the main police headquarters for Darwin. One woman remains in a stable condition at Royal Darwin Hospital. The motive for the spree is still unknown, but police say the gunman did make contact with them while still on the run. At this stage, we do not believe this is terrorism related. This is one individual. The scale of the violence wrought in Australia's quiet, tropical city, far less familiar. Our reporter Stephanie Zillman joins us now from Darwin. Stephanie, good morning. What do we know about this man? Good morning, Virginia. We know that this 45-year-old man uh, was out on parole after serving a lengthy prison term in Darwin's Correctional Centre. He was paroled just in January and we understand that the man had been engaged in work, but those arrangements had recently fallen over. Uh, he had considered this some kind of second chance at life, but um, we're not sure yet as to uh, his exact motivations, but we do understand that there were some personal circumstances there at play. So the rampage started at this motel in Woolna. What do we understand happened there, first of all? Virginia, yes, the rampage started at the Palms Motel, which is just behind me here on McMinn Street, just on the edge of Darwin CBD. We understand that at about 5.45pm last night, a man entered this Palms Motel with what witnesses described as a pump-action shotgun and started firing into two doors here at the motel. Uh, witnesses described uh, hearing up to 20 rounds fired before the man got in a dual-cab ute fleeing the scene and was at large for up to an hour. We understand that there are five crime scenes across the Darwin CBD with casualties in multiple locations. So uh, that all culminated, of course, in a dramatic arrest just a short distance from where I'm standing at the intersection of McMinn and the Stuart Highway, where that man was crash tackled to the ground by camouflaged tactical response group police and tasered and arrested at the scene. And uh, we understand that one person has been injured overnight, but there seems to be a bit of a question mark about that. We understand, Virginia, that one woman is currently being treated in Royal Darwin Hospital for her injuries and that uh, the other, uh, the deceased victims are all believed to be men. At this stage, we don't know whether any of those men were known to each other or to the gunman, uh, but at this stage, we do know that there is still one person receiving treatment for her injuries in Royal Darwin Hospital.